Good uh, for us here is the uh, afternoon, is evening. For Ghana, I think is afternoon. For you at the US is morning, isn't it? Yeah, I'll take you through the topic on human resource management in SMEs as the slide as our, our, our topics, our slide shows there. I think you see the, the, the slide. Today we are talking about human resource management. And I'm sure everybody is aware when we say human resource, we have uh, in the SMEs, we have uh, different types of resources. We have human resource, we have financial resource, we have some physical resource resources like the land, uh, infrastructures. So those make up the entire spectrum of resources in enterprises or in any organization. But today we are going to dwell more on the human resource. The reason why we, we, we decided to dwell on the human resource is because of the development in the SME world, especially the growth of technology. Human is becoming more important now than, my, than anything, than money, because of the, if we remember in the first, we had a topic on digital marketing, where we talk of the human as a, a brain behind the technology that is used. So for SMEs, because of the historical background that family businesses and individual-led SMEs they hardly employ, and therefore, they, they don't consider human resource. They don't manage the human resource. So for, for the SMEs to grow and compete in this 21st century, we need to manage the human resource so that that human resource can position the SME in a competitive edge to become, uh, to grow. So since agripreneurs are also a growth oriented, they are growth oriented enterprises, we thought it is worthwhile discussing the human resource aspect. So I will start by posing some two key questions, which appears on your screen. I wanted to know from, the, from you, what activities are you engaged in? And that question, and the second one, how do you plan to broaden your activity activities? These two questions will try to open up our, our, our we'll try to gauge ourselves whether the activities merit or can lead us into considering the human resource because of the potentiality to employ or not to employ, because it is, if it is too high tech, it means you, if, if you are a, a website designer, you might not need two or three people, you might be one or two, but again, because you will need some, some, some other people to help that can bring you into human resource. So maybe I open up this one, I want to hear from you two people, from, from you, if, what are your activities? Okay, so Stefano, I'm currently engaged in providing services for smallholder farmers, providing the extension service Business management service, uh, input for client, and then uh, looking into off tickets for their produce, and then some form of financial credits for them. So those are my, and I'm working in four regions in Ghana now. So that's what I'm doing. Stefan. I yes, I have noted. Okay. Benjamin. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm also into poetry. Uh, I'm into the production of broilers and then layers. Um, we plan on expanding. We only really need to get la a bigger land to expand because the market is available for as for the egg production, the market is already available. But for the broilers, for the meat production, we need to do a little marketing, more of the marketing in order to get people on board. So I think basically it's about expanding getting the stru a bigger structure to get more base that's how we, we plan on uh, um, broadening our activities yeah 
Yes, thank you. Now, I, I pose another question. Now, at, at the meantime, how many employees do you have? So, Stefano, currently I have um, permanent, what I'll call contract employees. I have uh, two, three. I would say I, I have three. And then I have those I call consultants who are the extension officers who are who, who earn their pay per deliverable. They are about um, eight. So those on contract are three. 12 months contract with me, and then the rest who are, let me put it casual, are eight. But the aim is to make them permanent so that they can be able to work effectively. Benjamin? Is that yeah, okay. So I have just two employees, just a small farm. So we have two employees, and with that one, we are not able to pay them full time. So we just give them some uh, stipend for the work they do, or just some allowance we give them. It's not a full-time payment that we give them because it's more fun. Yeah. Now, a follow-up question. Ben, uh, do, did you count yourself in the permanent contract, the, the, the three for from Fred and the two for Benjamin? Did you count yourself in? Yes, I did. I did count myself. Benjamin? Yeah, I did. I, I'm part of it. So it's one, there is one extra. Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. Now we can we can talk human resource because Fred, you have a total of 11, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. And Benjamin, you are two. Yeah. Yes. Now, the, why did I ask? I asked this question because of the, the growth, the, 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 the rationale, why should we discuss the whole aspect of human resource is when there is a potential for employment. Because now when you have 11 employees like Fred, then there is another follow-up question, Fred. Do you, do you plan to employ a human resource manager other than you? Yeah, so one of the positions, which is the admin and finance is, is doubling as uh, a human resource person, even though I play the key role, but then I have a support from uh, one of the staff who is on contracts, like 12 months contract with me, who doubles as a finance admin and then the human resource person. So she has oversight responsibility on that. But this is, of course, uh, being guided by me this time. So for now, at the interim, I don't think I want. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm ready to engage a full-time person who will be a human resource. I'm managing currently. So for the long term, yes, maybe in the next three years when things become much better than we are now, then yes, fine. But for now, we are we are managing with me myself and then the admin and finance person playing that role as well. Okay. Yes, in other countries, uh, like my country, we have the law that requires all empl employers, whether you are employing one, two or three, to be registered as employers and they have to comply with the employment and labor laws. What is the situation in Ghana? It's the same. It's no different. Are you registered? Yes. Benjamin? Yeah, I'm registered. Good. Now we can talk the business because now I'm talking with the registered employers. <laughs> employees. Employer employees. Okay, let's go to the second slide. Yeah. Now, this second slide, uh, we are trying to see now the importance of human resource management strategy. Why do we need uh, a human resource management strategy? 
we are saying this is a, it is a planning tool. Human resource management strategy is a planning tool, and it is one of the essential strategic document to help SMEs succeed in the 21st century where we have a, a global competition. We are not competing only with the SMEs in Ghana or in Tanzania, but as like, like the, the, what Fred does, this is a, something that can be uh, competed. There can be people from outside coming, but also even Fred the poultry, Benjamin, someone can, might come from another country and in, invest in poultry, and you find that the competition is open. So successful human resource management strategy is associated with an increase in profit. It helps to, to share profit because if you don't manage human resource, you may succumb the challenges of paying or losing, uh, losing where you could actually gain if you could have a, an appropriate fit in human resource, a fit in personnel. If you don't have a fit in personnel, what, what do I mean when I say fit in? A person who fits to a position of a job with the right competencies, with the right attitude, with the right motivation, with the right with, with the right ambition, someone who knows the mission and vision of your organization. So it also increases productivity. Like Fred, you have said, you have a, someone who is working part-time to help you some HR issues and um, some finance, but you, you take control. So at this startup level, at this very uh, early stages, the director or the owner of the vision bearer has to to, to, to oversee all the activities. But as your enterprises grows from small to medium, from medium to large, it automatically takes you away from such direct managerial roles into, into, in, into, into, into decision making through the board. So it also increases the market share and the satisfaction of clients and employees. And at the end, it leads into improvement and reputation of your SME. So, there are key processes to consider because as you are, you are, you are, you are trying to put up the strategy, to put up the, the HR, the human resource management in place, you will need to prepare some plans for personnel and the plan for activities. So, for personnel, I think we are, we are required to have, uh, each enterprise is required to have a human resource policy. Do you have one? Human? Yes, I have my HR, HR manual. Policy? Yes. HR manual, okay. Yeah. Benjamin? Um, not really, not any formal documents available yet, but at least we try to manage to get things done. Okay. Good. Yeah. I think as, as, you, as you move, because when we start, we usually don't work with papers. We work with the activities, and then we, from the activities, we, we define, we identify the gaps, and from yeah. the gaps, we fix in what is required, what is missing. So it's a practical approach. If we are going a theoretical approach, we start with the theory and then practice. But this process starts with the practice, and then you go to to theory, you build the theory based on practice, but we have to know the procedure that we need to have a human resource policy, which will have generic statements about what is expected to happen based on your vision of your company and mission. Again, it will have some statement which guide the, the development of a strategy. So from the policy, we need to have strategy. And after strategy, which is the SME strategic plan, we will have areas indicating the number, timelines, and the responsible people to do such activities. And then we come to step number two, which is finding the right, I say finding personnel, but I think we, 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 are, we, are, we want to look at the right personnel or employees. How do you, how did you get the two? Fred, you had three, Two plus eight, you had nine. How did you get these people? 
and, 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 and Benjamin, how did you get the people you are working with who are not partners, but they are employees? So for me, it was someone who had uh, the same vision in mind. So it looks like we, we share the same vision. So we decided to, okay, why not come and join me and let's start something because I have some capital, I have some land and then, so if you're interested in what I do, you have the same vision, you want to do something like that in the future and I'm about to start, why not come to join me? So that was how we, I got the person on board for him to come and join me. That was how I, I got him to help in doing the business. Yeah. Maybe a follow-up person. Is, is, so is that a, a partner or a mere employee? He's a partner. Okay, so he's in the decision making. He yeah, he also... made decision, but yeah, he he comes with decision, but everything we do, I have the final say because I started everything. And so he's like a partner, but I I I oversee everything, make sure that major decisions that are taken in the business, I do everything. However, he also has a say. Yeah. Okay. Now I think he, before we we go to Benjamin, let's discuss this more detail. Because the experience showed that um, when uh, SME starts or startups, the owner is, the, is everything. He's the one who, 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 who decides, the one who plans, but the others are just involved. So, but when we, we grow, we reach into a point where we have the vision, we, we, we see the end, but the process in between, the decision we have to borrow from others. So we discuss and sometimes we vote on what we decide. But at this material time, we override the, 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 the process. Sometimes we dictate because we say it is mine, but we, we, in, in, in growth pattern, we move from saying this is my enterprise, we go to say this is our enterprises, and at the end you grow, you become a chairman where you have a full management, independent management there, and you just chair the meetings twice, three times, or once, uh, twice a year, or sometimes once. And that's where actually you are, you are large. But at this material, material time, we, 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 we dictate the, the, the show. So this partner is an employee. If he, did he have uh, all the rights, the, 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 we call it employee benefits, like uh, the social security. Right. Uh, special, okay. Yeah, so you are asking about uh, security, as in employee security. Yes, about employee security. We have social security funds in our country, for example. Do you have? Uh, for now, no. So, you know, like I said, mine is a very small farm. We have just about 600 beds. So, uh, and we are just about a year, a year and a half old. If we want to consider everything that goes with uh, employee management, that we may run at a loss, and this may not go to So some of the things we initially decide to just for for go them and then just try to grow a bit at some stage, and then we can we know how we can we can manage stuff. So for now, there's nothing like employee security in my business. Okay, let's proceed. But, uh, we have. Uh, I hope you got my point. Okay, continue. I'm asking if you got what I was trying to say. Do you get my point? I got your point. You said you are, you, you, you are still one, you are one year and a half. And yeah. the, you think subscribing to such funds, try to contribute might, might lead you into a loss because you are still small and, and, and that's okay. That's okay. okay. All right, thank you. Fred, you, you said, did you subscribe? Uh, do you pay, do you contribute to the social security fund on, on the three employees, because the, the part-time are not involved, the, the contracted one? Yes, I do. For yourself? Yes. For myself, no, but for them, for the other two, I do. Okay. Maybe I would suggest you, you, you include yourself, because at the end, the terminal benefit, if anything, you will have to do something. <laughs> yes. For, for me, I'm acting as a consultant for now. So I'm supposed to take care of that. I'm looking, ah, okay. I'm looking at doing that for myself next year. So that I'll also be on my platform. 
Okay, okay, let's proceed then. We were discussing about uh, the, the processes, the key processes. The second one, we, 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 the third one is interview and selection, employee interviewing and selection. And I understood from your discussion on how you got the, the employees or the partners. It's not really about interview. That's Benjamin. But I didn't hear about Fred. How did you get eight? Okay, so the the eight came through an in, uh, a job advertisement to act as extension service officers. So they came and we interviewed them, and then we told them the 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 the, the mode of the job and what they will be required to do and all that. For the other two who are on contract. One came in as an intern, as an intern, intern person for internship for three months. And then I realized that she was okay. The, the, the fourth point is about training employees based on requirements of the job. But as we have discussed, uh, based on your experience, we, you, you are still learning. You, are, you, are, you, you have on job training. Do you, by the way, provide or set aside funds for training yourself as employees, first employees of your SMEs and those others whom you have uh, engaged so far. Uh, I'm, I didn't get your point. I'm saying you we have point, yes, point number four is about yeah. training. So I'm asking, did you set aside or have you set aside some funds to allow yourself as first employees and the others whom you have taken on board to go to go for training in order to to, to build your own capacity. Yes, yes, that's one thing we we usually do from time to time. We we go for such trainings. Um, the veterinary um, office here they do organize some of those programs, and they are, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture also organizes some of those programs for uh, entrepreneurs and for those who are into agri agri business, especially with the animal farming. So from time to time, when we hear of such training sessions, we go. I go with my my other partner. Then we go to listen, uh, learn more techniques, more ideas, and more strategies and processes in handling our business. Now we we do one thing we don't we don't joke with because with this kind of business there are things coming up every day, every every year there are new things coming up, and so if you 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 try to stay back, you may lose a lot of things. So yes, we do. We go for we go for trainings. And the reward comes uh, after maybe a year. In large organizations, they do such evaluation uh, two times biannually, after six months and then after 12 months. It depends, some prepare tools like uh, open, uh, open review or to open performance review appraisal forms. Others, they, there are different techniques, but the open review appraisal where you set targets at the first, when, when, when you, you, you open, for example, at the start of the year, each one is, is outlining the targets, the, the, the targets and the activities. And the, based on your work plan, at the end, you, you measure the performance based on the indicators that you have identified. But the research shows that, and the experience, not much, this, uh, the SMEs do not do much of this aspect of evaluating and rewarding employees, especially when it is still a startup, like the Benjamins, who, which is still not even two years. So, but those which have advanced and they have full structured uh, organization with the employees and all the departments, they do evaluate and uh, reward employees through an annual or during the employ employees or, or workers day, they reward or they use different means of making sure that they reward employees. So for you, I don't know wh wh whether you, you have reached this, but, but for Benjamin, I wouldn't even ask because it is still a, a very uh, early, early st st uh, stages. Number six is to comply with the laws. I have asked this, that you, there are laws of uh, registering yourself and you said you are registered. Number, yeah, those are the six 
key processes to consider that you have to, the last one is to comply with the laws and other regulation relating to human resource. We have human resource laws and the regulations like uh, workers compensation. How do you, what do you, how do you call it in Ghana? Here we call it workers compensation fund. How do you call it in Ghana? I think in Ghana it's called um, social security and trust fund. Social security and trust fund. And that's, that's what, yeah, that's what we have here. Ah, here we have two. We have social security, we have national social security fund, which is the one that takes the, the contributions for someone who is being terminated, if his one is terminated. And we have the one which is workers, com workers compensation fund. That is for when one is being injured, when he, is, he or she is on duty. It's like insurance. So there are two laws okay. here. Okay, for Ghana, we don't have a net like that for, as a national program, but based on the company, you can have an insurance for your company. That one is also there. So depending on your company and what you do, you can have a special insurance or special uh, first aid or hospital care for your people. Uh, but no, it's not a national thing. However, uh, companies are required to do it as under the law. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's go to another issue that is about factors influencing human resource planning. Because you're saying human resource planning is a process which starts from putting the policy and now after putting the policy, you put the strategy in place and then you put the action, the action plan and then you, you, you start in pain. So there are four, five factors, uh, there are more than one factor, but here I put four and uh, I leave others to be shared from the, our country specific cases. We have one factor which is competition, domestic and foreign. We need sometimes to put a good human resource management uh, strategy because of the competition. For example, you told, uh, you shared with us, Fred, about you are a consultant, you're in financial, uh, financial sector. You are also doing the extension services. And, and we understand that there are NGOs, international NGOs also doing such. And these NGOs, because they employ people with the competences, they can also outcompete you, even in the pricing of your services. I don't know how do you compete in terms of setting prices for your services? Fred? Well, we, we, we just price according to the current market uh, pricing. We don't, we don't go above, we don't go below. We are just in between there. So the government has prices for inputs, standard prices. So we make sure we are just in between there. OK. So if the prices are standardized, it means yeah. what you are competing for is to have the quality output. It means if you have quality human resource, you are going to end up with quality services. And therefore, with quality services, you can win the market share more than if you don't have a quality. So the competition aspect can be taken care in terms of having the, the right or the qualified or quality human resource. The second issue is about consumer demand. Sometimes you may need, the, 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 the consumers may need some, a product or service of a certain quality or certain standard. So if you don't find, you find that you, you yourself cannot meet that and you find somebody else who is working somewhere is good. So through, when you plan your human resource management strategy, you also strategize on how to get the, the, the human resource which can create or can meet such demand. And in this case, again, we need also to do some customer needs survey so that we know what our, our, our customers currently need so that we can actually uh, adapt ourselves into meeting their demands. The third aspect is about technology. Nowadays, we have new technology. For example, now we are discussing, you are in Ghana, I'm in Tanzania, and the others are in the US. But Mind you, I was actually being coached 
yeah, about how to use this webinar, how to upload the, the slides. So if um, in my, my, my enterprise, in my company, I have actually discovered that in order to compete, to teach people globally, I need to be equipped with, the, with the, this webinar technologies, how to, to, to use computer, internet, and uh, save many people from different parts where I'm staying, I'm stationed somewhere in Tanzania. So in this case, if someone doesn't understand this factor of knowledge, uh, new knowledge development, he might not see that there is a need of having human resource which is updated to the technologies. I have given the example of a webinar. But again, we have government interventions. Fred, you have just said that uh, the government have set some indicative prices. So you are not going beyond such guided prices in, your, in some inputs and, uh, and the like. But in, so government interventions like the laws, which require that every employer has to register is a government intervention that influences one to go for human resource management uh, strategy. Any other that you know that we can add, what are the other factors that influence you to, or propels you, forces you to strategize or to plan for human resource management? Welcome, you can, you, you can share your experience. Stefano, this is Alexandra. I um, just want to jump in on behalf of Bamadel right now. She isn't able to um, speak on the call, but she did type in a question in the Q&A. Um, the question says, is it appropriate for a young organization of two and a half years old to start paying social security of her staff, considering her financial position not being too strong? I think, as, as I said, if there is a law in a country that requires employers to, 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 to register and pay for social securities, it, this one doesn't matter whether you are one year and a half or two years and a half, because they consider formality. Being formal is when you, are, you have registered, you are recognized. But if you are still informal, you have not registered, you are not supposed to pay. But once you register, you are obliged to pay no matter your financial position unless you file the return of your income showing that you are not generating a profit and that your working capital is not good enough to justify your pay. I will give an example. Last year, I got a, a summons from the Tanzania Revenue Authority requiring me to, 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 to state why I didn't pay for staff for the core skill development levy, which is a contribution charged against the number of people employed in the, in the organization. So, but the, 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 the issue here is not the position of your financial position, but the number of employees. In our country, for example, the one who is supposed to pay for employees is when you have more than three employees. But if it's one, two, to three, you are not paying. But for social security, if this one is registered in the employer's list, employees, employees list, then you have to pay. But it, it, there are some limitations. There are some threshold value. For example, in our country, if you are paying someone less than 170,000, which is equivalent into about a less than one, less than one dollar, because one dollar is 2,000, less than 10, 20 dollars. You are not paying. But if it exceeds that amount, you have to pay. So the regulations have considered all those factors, number of employees, amount of money you are paying to that employee, so there are, there are cutoff points. If you are beyond that, you are, you are below that cutoff point, you don't pay. But if you are above that cut, cutoff point, you have to pay. I don't know whether I have answered it. Now let's get to the, to the other issues, to the other slide. That's the organization of the human resource. We are saying human resource management is a function within SMEs. And in large SMEs, in large enterprises, this is actually a department. 
but in most of the SMEs, human resource management rests on the top or on the, the owner. Yeah, it is rests on the owner, but in most organizations, it can be, this one is put on the owner, department, service, sector, or even a center. So, but in our case, most of the human resource function is put on the owner or the manager. We have heard from Fred, we have heard from, 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 from Benjamin. I don't know, we, we haven't heard from Eugene. Maybe he can share with us, how do you take issues of uh, human resource? You can even write uh, to, to share your experience. How do you handle the human resource management aspect? I know you have a poultry farm again, like uh, Benjamin and yours is a bit advanced, so how many employees? I started asking others the number of employees they have, so it depends on the number of employees that determine the positioning of the human resource management. Uh, if we proceed, however, a standard practice requires that human management, uh, the SMEs should have a manager as a responsible for HR, and whose tasks are to advise other managers, e.g. production, if you are in production, sale, during recruitment, hiring, salary determination, motivation, and the other activities that are related with the human resource. So we have heard from, ben, from Fred that he has one part-time HR who helps him in such issues. Uh, so this is the standard practice. So we are all supposed to have human resource manager or a personnel responsible in charge of specific aspect, hiring, recruitment, hiring. But we are saying during recruitment and hiring is a, is a team. So the owner is there, the manager may be even an independent person who can, can witness the process of recruiting. Uh, we have uh, eight key human resource management strategies in SMEs. I think we have started discussing about recruitment when we, we started talking about how do you recruit. We have employees engagement and some of us, uh, like Benjamin, shared with us how he, he engaged the, his, the colleague is when he discovered that he, he is of the like minded. So he tried to convince him to join so that they could do together. That's employee engagement. So there are different ways of engaging. Some they, they can share social network. Some they advertise in the newspaper. But there is also motivation aspect. You don't, in order to keep employees, you have to have a strategy of how to motivate them. How, how much you pay? Do they complain? How much you compensate? Fred just shared with us that the other eight are paid based on the task. You do the task, you agree on the, the, the portion, and others do this on terms of commission. But as a motivation aspect, you can put a baseline, a basic amount of pay, which is constant, and then you, one can earn more or less depending on the, the contribution. But there is also empowerment. Empowerment is like capacity building, but also giving someone power to decide. Not only that you put him and then he cannot decide, everything has to call, has to ask you, if you are not there, nothing goes. So empowerment is very important. And the fifth aspect is about sportsmanship and that is about being proactive, being frontline. So you have to, 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 to consider about uh, being frontline, but again also to be very creative, to take more than when we say sportsmanship is when you, when, when you go and look football, the coach can teach the standard uh, football rules, but the player can actually take more than, than that, can even be more creative when they add, and that's what we call talent management. So in, in human resource management, we have something which we need to nurture, to identify, nurture, and develop talents. There is knowledge management, and that's about sharing. The departments have to share the knowledge. Production department with the human resource, with the finance, we have, there must be some linkages to make sure that you transfer knowledge so that one a person at the front desk can also know what is happening at the production. If a guest comes into your front desk, a personnel doesn't know what is happening in the production unit, then he must say, okay, I don't know, maybe let me call the boss. So we need to have human 
a knowledge management strategy that can help all employees or all personnel in the organization to know what is going on. And this is the value chain concept. One has to know, though, in the division of task or labor, one has also to know that he is responsible and answerable for a particular aspect, but must have the general knowledge about what is going on in an enterprise. We have also something called job security, which is about, we, we talked about uh, security funds, or that's where you, you, you put some money to secure your, your employees. But again, the issues of insurance, life insurance, depending on the nature of the job, the risky elements available. And we have workforce diversity. If you have a lot of, um, you have many, many employees, you can actually see the workforce diversity, how diverse the workforce is. Do you have male, gender, male and female, young and old? Yeah. So this is the diversity, skilled and semi-skilled, highly skilled, professionals against them, professional, general. So the, the workforce diversity will help you to determine is a key factor in, the, in, in developing a human resource strategy. I see a question, maybe let me check at it. I'd also like to know which management style is best. Yeah, the management style which is best for startup business and it, should it be changed over time? Yeah, Ba Midele, I can respond this live. There is no good or bad management style. The best style is the one that helps you to, to reach your goal or to reach your, your, your objectives. But standard way is that which follows or abides with the law. If you are an employer, you have to follow the labor laws or the employment laws and regulations. That's the, 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 the standard or the management style. There must be some, some, some good way of, of communicating. The chain of command must not be haphazard. That's the best style. So if you, are, you, you, you don't divide the labor and you can talk to everybody and everybody can instruct any, anybody, that's not a good style. So there are standard ways which helps the organization to grow because of the need to obey the chain of command. Okay. Now the last, this is the last but one slide and I think we have some minutes. Major issues fetching HRM in SMEs. We have contextual, which are the, the contextual factors, which is firm size, as we have seen. The, the, the firm with two employees or two personnel is different from the one with 11. So this is the factor which can help you if you, to subscribe to social security funds, depends on the size. The one who have many employees has to, 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 be, to have a good system or well-structured systems to, 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 to manage the human resource. But the one with two can control them or can manage them with the informed ways. The business plan, as we have seen the other day, or even when we started this uh, project, we, we, we tried to ask everybody if you have a written business plan. The business plan helps you actually to, 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 to penetrate the market, but also to convince investors that you, 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 you have a, a well-written systems. And it can also help you to see the needs with, with beforehand. So a business plan is a roadmap. Hello. Export, franchise, family business, partnerships. So we have heard from the Benjamin that he has invited someone and I consider him being a partner because they are actually running together and they, they sometimes sit and do. Family business is where the family is the one that makes the decision. And when they invite others, they become mere employees, but they are not involved in, in decision. So this is a factor which is facing human resource in SMEs. So you find that many, most of the human, the SMEs are belonging to this category of family business. And the, the, the firm size, most are small, so they don't, comply or they don't consider human resource strategy as a key element. But we are urging you, please, to start developing the strategies you grow. The other issue is intermediary variables, the requirement of expectations of external stakeholders, demand for HR. That means 
when you are demanding for human resource. And you demand human resource when you grow. When you have job places that need someone to, to fit in. So you have to, 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 to strategize on how to get that someone. Supply of financial resources, you need to get money. You need maybe a financial expert to help you to put down the business plan with the projections, balance sheet. This is a, a, a profession. So you can have that as a permanent employee or you can have that as a consultant or, or a, someone who you, you employ to do a, a, a task and then after that, you are done with him. So human resource is not only those which are permanent, but who are permanent, but also you can have a, a, a part-time. Perceived the value of human resource practices by CEOs. <laughs> this one is very critical because some people think that when you, you bring in other people into your business, they might take away your business idea and they become your competitor. So this perception might determine whether one can put down a human resource management strategy and recruit or can remain small, can hide be, be, below the, the table as himself or herself. So perception is something that if you perceive human resource management as costful, like, of course, Benjamin, you said is costful and you are unable, it's true because you're only two and you're just one year. But as you grow, you have to put into perspective that you need to develop, you need to grow so that you put that one as a study. So, but when you, you, in order to do that, you need a human resource management department or, and a formal HR management practices. Formal is when you have the policy, you have the strategy in place, and you have the operational manuals. That brings me to the end of the slides, but doesn't, if we have some minutes, I think that will be open for more questions and discussion. Any question? There is a question on how do one deal with export procedures in Tanzania? Yeah, this question, the export, if you want to export, it depends on what you export. But in this case, if you are exporting agri or agricultural produce, previously, we used to have a, a, permi a certificate and a, 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 permi a permission, a, a permit from the Ministry of Agriculture. But currently, this very month, the government has announced that there is no need to have a permit from the Ministry of Agriculture. But what is required is to have a certificate of origin. And this certificate of origin is being uh, supervised or is being managed or is being uh, facilitated by the Tanzania Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture which is a non-government, non-state machinery. And in order to, is, is a member basis, it helps the business people to, 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 to get the certificate of origin because they are the ones which can know where is this product coming from. But also you need to have a phytosanitary certificate if it is edible. And it, next week, as we speak, there on, on, on Monday, there will be a training by the USA on how to export to US through AGOA. And uh, my, my, my company, and, and, and uh, I, I've actually I identified one person to go and attend that. So export, it depends also where are you exporting to. If you are exporting to EU, there are protocols or procedures for exporting to EU. But if you're exporting to US, again, the AGOA process protocol uh, abides. If you're exporting in the East African region, we have the East African agreement on export. And the one most important is the certificate of origin, that what you're exporting is actually originating from the country, and it is known by the authorities. In order to avoid the uh, mixing, the imported, and the avoiding uh, aversion of tax and uh, duties. But if you are now exporting to SADC, you also need to know the SADC protocol. So the, you, the, the, the condition or terms of export depends on where you are exporting and the, the, the bilateral agreements between countries. Thank you. Someone is asking, how easy is it to obtain a license 
from the Tanzanian Food and Drug Authority. It is not so easy to start with because it has a process that you have to apply to write to them to, and if, when you apply, they come and, 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 and they survey, and after surveying, they write a report. And that report is going to another, uh, is being discussed, and then they might even interview you. But for SMEs, we have a special program under the Small Industry Development Organization, CEDO, where if one is, uh, have, has subscribed membership, this process becomes so easy because the CEDO within the, the particular area, which is a district, can facilitate the process of surveying and uh, making sure that the environment or the, the, the environment where the business is being conducted is, is proper. And it is proper in terms of it is within the allowed area, it has license, it is a legal activity, and it is done using some levels of uh, quality standards. And then they write to, 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 FD, to TFDA, Tanzania Food Drug Authority, and the, the payment or the costs are being waived because there is a fund, a special fund to help small and medium entrepreneurs or small and medium enterprises to grow. Another question? Yeah, so I want to find out. Um, a company like mine is a very small company. We're not trying to grow. Now, I want to ask, ideally, how many employees do you think we should, I should have before I think of employing an HR personnel? Or how many years do you think ideally a company should I think before um, looking at getting someone to handle HR activities in the, in the company? I think there is, no, there is no predetermined time and there is no predetermined number. It depends on the nature of your enterprise. For example, an IT, an IT or an IT expert or an IT based uh, enterprise, it can remain with one or two. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it can remain with one or two for many years because of the nature. But a, a, a farm, like a, a poultry farm, where you need some helpers, you need some cashews, you actually need to, to employ more. So, but to subscribe into the, according to the law, it again depends on your, your, your turnover, the amount of sales, the amount of money you are generating from your activities. If you are not generating good enough turnover per, per year, you have to remain small for some time while strategizing on how to grow. Because adding employees with this small turnover will actually put your enterprise in a, a, a tight corner for growth because that any employee means expense. But every employee must, must add value. You have an employee who worth 500 or 200 USD or 100 USD cost. That employee must generate more than that. If it does, he, he or she does not generate more than that, do not please add. So the decision to add, when to add, how many, depends on the business operations, nature of business, and the turnover. Okay, well, with that, I think we, we're a bit over on time, and there's been some opportunity for people to ask questions. So I think that this is probably a, a good time to wrap it up. I'm sure that Stefano will be um, available to answer further questions that you may have about his presentation uh, via email. And just want to thank you, Stefano, for everything that you've contributed today and um, the questions you've answered and things you've shared with us about human resource management. It was very valuable and insightful, so thank you. Thank you. And um, before we sign off, uh, just wondering if you have anything else to add, Stefano, any um, parting words? Yeah, I just to remind maybe to share with the agripreneurs those some guiding questions. And the, the, the questions I shared so that they can, we, can, we can also chat. I'm free to answer any question through email from today on.
only to thank you the participants for the active participation. Uh, they've been very proactive trying to ask questions. Uh, this is encouraging. Yes, thank you, Stefano, and thank you everybody for joining.